Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Monday, November 15th, 2021. My goodness, we're getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving. That turkey day is on the way, and the market still seems like it wants to be extremely bullish. Friday, we had a nice little rally despite a terrible consumer sentiment number. We just chose to ignore it and kept pushing higher. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend and you're ready to crank it up for the week. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can get some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. First off, if we take a look at these charts, let's just draw up a few things here. Um, if you notice, we have this trend right here in the Dow and we've kind of slipped down past that trend in the Dow and we um, had that little bullish rally coming in here at the end of the week, pushing us back up. Let's take note that we did not test this level of price support solidly. So we still have that possibility that we could push down and test that level of price support. And if that level of price support were to fail let's just take note that we have a much stronger price support right here in the chart now keep in mind that markets don't always just have to go up or down they could go sideways and slipping underneath this trend the way we have there is that possibility even though we're popping and trying to gap up this morning there is just a little bit of weakness that showed up in in Asian markets last night, European markets are a little soft this morning. So let's consider that possibility that we could just kind of slip into more of a consolidation up here as well. And just remember, a consolidation would be a very healthy thing for the market to do after um, just, just careening to the upside. Now, that if that doesn't occur and we do actually push back up, remember we could push up into any of these levels up in here, any of this price level, and we have that possibility that we could turn around and come back down and test support. Remember, pretty common to when we sell off to make double bottoms or those kind of things in the chart. So we may still have another test lower. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY, little bit better situation here in the SPY. Now it all depends on how you draw trend. If we draw the trend right up through here, notice we held trend just about perfectly in that chart. If you followed this through in here, you can see that very sharp upside trend did kind of fail. And let's take a look at what else we've got going on in here. We've got some price resistance in this chart. Right up in here, in that chart, the top side, and we could run into a little bit of that bottom side resistance right in there as well. So we're pushing up pretty solidly here this morning. It was a big strong move on Friday um, in um, the SPY and it was largely the big techs that were doing the majority of the lifting. So let's keep an eye on that. Now one thing I am concerned about here in this chart is although we're creating this little higher level of price support, we never really came back and tested any um, substantial levels of price support, which kind of means we're floating out here in midair a little bit, unless we come off of this trend and say, no, we're bouncing off of that trend. And I'm not 100% sure that's the case, but let's watch that closely. Now, keep in mind, as we approach this resistance, there is that potential for a pop and drop pattern today, that potential that we could hit that price resistance and put in that lower high and continue in this pullback. So watch carefully for that possibility today. Now it's also possible that the bulls, we just have this uh, amazing capacity to ignore any of the market internals. So it is entirely possible we could push on through and hit new record highs as well. So watch those closely. Let's take a look at the cues. Now the NASDAQ had just a really strong day on Friday. 
And again, it was the big tech giants that really did the majority of the lifting here in the market. Now, this one, as you can see, if I run a trend up through here, we're holding on to that level. But if you use the trend a little bit tighter in here, we broke that trend just a little bit. And in this pullback that we um, had last week, notice that we didn't come anywhere close to any kind of price support in the chart. So we're still pretty elevated here. We really haven't tested anything, which, which adds a little bit of danger as we rally back up. So as we rally, let's watch some of these price resistance levels. That There's the underneath side of that level and the upper side of that level, where we could run into some price resistance, and that's where we could catch that lower high um, in the chart. And that might suggest that we would push down into that area there. So watch that carefully. It's also entirely possible that we just ignore all of this inflation and we ignore sentiment and all these other things and we just push right on through. So it is possible that we could just push right up uh, on here and just pretend like nothing is going on in these charts. So watch that carefully. And then if we take a look at IWM, now IWM has one of the better technical patterns in the chart right now that I, in the charts, because it's not so overextended in the short term. Notice that we did push back this last week. We've had, we've got oil settling down a little bit today as well. So that um, if oil settles down, that could actually have a little bit of a negative effect here on uh, the Russell. But keep an eye on this. I still think there is a relatively significantly high possibility that we could test this level down in here. So let's watch that closely if we were to rest or pull back into that chart. Let's take a look at our um, VIX. Now our VIX had a pretty good day. Sorry, our VIX had a pretty good day on Friday. Pulling back, we seem to have a, it's kind of remarkable to me, but um, we seem to have no care or concern that our consumer sentiment was at its lowest level in 10 years. Um, but let's watch that closely right in here. We failed, we pushed up through that resistance, but we failed right back down through that level um, in the chart. So the fear is dropping out of this chart and we'll wanna watch these price levels down in here. Um, you know, we made a higher high, but um, we have no lower high in here. So it is that possibility that we could push all the way back down into here. And with the morning pop, I would suggest we're going to gap a little bit lower here in the VIX and we'll see what happens from that point. But watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our T2122. Now T2122, I get lots of questions about this, but T2122 is a very simple indicator. It is a ratio of the four week new high and the four week new low. And notice that every time we're up here in this level, that's when we tend to pull back. And when we're down in this range, it's plotted between 100 and zero. And we're down in this range where we tend to rally. Well, what we did on this pullback this last week was, well, we created really no damage um, in this. We did pull back toward close to the middle of um, this chart. And then on Friday, we powered back higher. So what we wanna watch is if we can find that inspiration here for the bulls, then we have that opportunity that we could push right back up in here. But let's keep in mind, we've been elevated in here for some time. So if we don't find enough inspiration in here, it is possible those bears could get a little feisty. They haven't been lately, but they could get feisty. We could see that pop and drop pattern. We could see a little lower high coming into play because we do have significant room to move to the downside if we're, we have any kind of inspiration that way. So watch that carefully in here a little bit of uncertainty remember t2122 doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go it tells us where those pressure points are and right now we're just kind of out here in the mid range we're kind of floating in midair not really quite sure what um, it wants to do here let's take a look at our t2107 T2107 is the percentage of stocks above the 200 day. And I've been bringing this up day after day after day because I think this was significant in the fact that we had so many stocks 
below their 200 day moving average. But we have recovered quite a bit on that and notice that we've built a little price support level in here on that chart. We've got about 50% of our stocks above that 200 day now and we are kind of holding on to this upside trend in here. So if we can hold this in here and that possibility of those pushing back up, that could help an awful lot if we get some of these boat anchors kind of up off the bottom of the ocean here. And um, that would help some levity um, in the market if we can get some of those moving. So watch that closely. I got to give this one to the bulls. That looks pretty good. Then if we take a look at T2101, our um, absolute market breadth. Now I got to tell you, this one continues to be just a little bit on the perplexing side in that we continue to tighten and tighten and tighten in a very, very small range. And um, that means that we still have that ability. We could still range around in here um, in this chart. Notice that we're approaching that lower side of that range here in, in uh, market breadth. But just watch that as we range around in here. I don't think we run into major problems in the market unless we get that break above. It'll be that selling wave that breaks above and holds that could really start triggering some substantial selling. So don't know when that might occur. Um, I'm not trying to predict that. That could be next year sometime. I don't know. So just watch that closely. But we continue to tighten and tighten and tighten in this um, wedge. We may be losing a little bit of momentum in this upside move. So watch that close. And then um, T2108, um, um, I've been bringing this up recently because I do think this is significant. These are the number of stocks that are holding above their 40 day moving average. And I want you to notice in this current rally, um, we have m a lot fewer stocks above their 40 day moving average than we did back here and that we did here on these highs in the market. So kind of keep in mind we're we're stretching a, um, a, a significant number, but we're stretching a few stocks that are doing the majority of the lifting to the upside. And then we have this really odd situation where about half the stocks are down below their 50 day. So kind of a weird situation here in the market. And it begs the question, what happens if some of those high flyers start to find some selling? So watch that closely in case that were to occur. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now, our economic calendar is rather light today, not anything on there to be particularly worried about. We have Empire State Manufacturing numbers, but that's not a big uh, number. And we have lately tended to just ignore um, a lot of this economic data. So could be the same today, even if it comes out. Uh, a negative um, we'll want to watch for that now keep in mind as we move through the week we have some big numbers and this week is going to be pretty heavy in um, retail we're going to have a target we're going to have walmart we're going to have home depot reporting this week and then we've got these retail sales numbers here on um, tuesday now that will be interesting to pay attention to um, if inflation has impacted consumer sentiment that much, did it impact their sales? My guess at this point is no. Um, and the reason I say that is because our consumer debt has hit new record highs. So I'm guessing consumers are still spending, but they're just piling on the debt at the moment. So watch that closely. And then we've got industrial production, business inventories, and housing market. And then later on the week, notice we got housing starts of permits, petroleum status, you know, the normal, normal culprits, um, besides a huge number of Fed speakers this week. So watch carefully for that. Let's take a look um, at the earnings calendar. But before I do that here, just really quickly, guys, I want to point this out because I brought this up last week and I want to follow through with this. Um, if you guys have seen um, this, this is a S&P 500. Um, historical um, PE ratio and I want you to notice that back here in uh, 2000 or 1999 we hit 132 percent 
uh, our PE ratio hit 132%. We did soften. If you remember last week, we were at 99% of the historical average. We softened a little bit with um, last week's selling uh, to 98%. But let's keep in mind that we are still extremely elevated in that PE ratio. So you'll want to be considering that, thinking that I think it would be a bad idea to be thinking that the market has no downside coming um, in it because I think we're pushing a little bit of a bubble here um, in the market. And then if you take a look at the Buffett indicator, now Buffett uses a different uh, metric in here. He uses a composite of the market value, takes the, the total value of the market and divides it by the GDP. And what's interesting in this level is we are at 215%, 215% above the historical average. Um, if we were at 120%, we would be fairly valued. So you can see we're well above, 72% above that historical average. So we are very stretched out here and we have to be con uh, conscious of that and be careful just not to just drive into the market thinking there'll never be a downside. Not saying that we're gonna fail or we're gonna fall or any of that thing, any of that's going to happen, but I would wanna put that caution in your ear just to not over trade um, just in case we do happen to find that uh, bearish inspiration to move us lower. Let's take a look <clears throat> Um, at these earnings for today. Now our earnings for today, we have a big calendar, but what's interesting is we don't have that many notables today. There's a lot of things on there, but a lot of small caps and things like that. Um, and these are not necessarily big market moving stocks, you know, uh, PLBY um, will be reporting today. Keep an eye on that. A nice upside pattern. <clears throat> good looking chart, but again, not exactly a big market mover. Um, COK, um, you know, a rather new issue here, um, somewhat notable, but keep an eye on that. Now, Tyson, uh, Tyson might be interesting today. It looks like they're getting quite a little whipsaw in here. Anything food wise, um, seems to have been a hot topic here um, lately so watch watch that one how it responds um, how about AAP advanced auto will be reporting today so keep an eye on that looks like they're moving higher here um, in the market so watch these things closely uh, today um, as we move through the week now <clears throat> We're going to start dropping off on these earnings reports and we're going to start seeing fewer and fewer and fewer, but we will get some headline numbers again, like Walmart and Home Depot and stuff like that, that could move the market around. But um, our earnings season is starting to wind down and we're going to start seeing quite a bit fewer on those earnings inspirations for the market. Let's take a look at some stocks, however, that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be worthy, if you could please also click that uh, thumbs up button, leave a brief comment, that helps the channel to continue to grow. It's the engagement with a video that makes a difference. And I just wanna say thanks to everyone who does take the time to do that. It, it honestly means the world to me. I truly appreciate it. And um, if, um, you have noticed we went over 24,800 subscribers. And what that means is we're getting closer and closer and closer to that 25,000. Once we reach 25,000, we'll do a little drawing and someone can choose whether they want, these are personally carved trees. I do wood carving. Um, now you can pick whatever you want, except this little gnome over here. That's my wife's. Um, I could make another one, I guess, but, um, um, I will ship you and you can choose whether you want a tree with lights. If you want something else, um, that's certainly doable as well. So keep an eye on those um, if you have an interest in that. Let's take a look at these stocks that could be setting up. And remember, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You've got to do your own due diligence and you should never, ever blindly follow someone else's trade ideas. Let's take a look at Plug. Now, I have a bias here on Plug. I do hold this 
this position, but I like the way this is trending in this pattern. And I personally have a belief that um, hydrogen may be um, one of the easier ways to get these EVs on the road without um, trillions and trillions of dollars of infrastructure spreading wire everywhere and all the charging stations. But keep an eye on this. Um, plug has perked up nicely here recently. It's looking pretty good. Pretty decent little pattern setting up. Might be worth putting on a list and watching. Take a close eye or keep a close eye on that. Take a look at Valero. Now Valero has struggled here just a little bit and with oil sector pulling back this may not be the best of ideas. Notice we have the this little um, lower area here in this chart. However, if if Valero can find that inspiration, notice I placed a price alert right here. If it can find that inspiration to pop back above, I think we might want to know that because as oil prices continue to surge, certainly we're going to need those refiners out there doing quite a job to get, get those supplies up. So watch carefully uh, for that potential on Valero. You might want to take a look at some of the retail stocks out there. It's been kind of remarkable how strong um, they have been here recently. Um, take a look at like UAA, UAA Under Armour. Now I happen to hold this one as well. I've, I'm holding this as a long term. It's just a bet with a friend. But as you can see, um, holding this stock here has been looking pretty good. We had a big gap up on earnings. We've pulled back and now we're resting in here pretty nicely. So it's not quite ready for prime time. But what you want to do is watch this for that next potential opportunity. We can find that bullish inspiration to push on higher. I think you should be keeping an eye on Cisco. Now I've mentioned Cisco many times before. And we did pop and then pulled back. A little bit of whipsaw in the market with that selling um, this week. As you can see, we pulled back in that move. But I don't think anything is, has failed here. Um, nice little upside trend holding in this chart. Notice we've got a little hammer on Friday. We're trying to follow through today. That could turn out to be a bit of a morning star pattern. So watch that if that can push on through to the upside. Looking pretty good. I think I have to continue to talk about um, some of these metals. Um, FCX. FCX had a really nice move um, Thursday and Friday, pushing up through this price resistance. Now, we may have to wait for just a little bit of consolidation and realizing there is price resistance over here that we need to make note of. But any kind of rest or consolidation in here, I think might set up more upside opportunity here in FCX and it'd be worth keeping a close eye on that. So watch that one closely. And then I also have to continue to mention silver and gold. Silver has been moving up nicely here. Look at this nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern in the chart. And we were questioning whether or not we'd actually be able to break that uh, or break through that but we have done that at this point breaking the downtrend looking pretty good here at the moment as inflation continues to worry folks we might see this pick up so keep an eye in here um, looking pretty good so far I would not however rule out a test that we have to come back and test that neckline so watch carefully for that. There'd be no need to have to rush, I think, into it. And then take a look at GLD. GLD really kind of surprised me how we went from kind of underperforming to just really popping hard. Now, keep in mind, there's a still a lot of uh, junk congestion in this area here that we've got to work through and after breaking through a significant level of price resistance in here it's not uncommon that we have to come back and test that level in here for support so watch for that possibility now we could consolidate out here and then just keep on going but we could also kind of get catch that pullback before that occurs so watch closely for that um, I'd keep an eye on Ford now General Motors had a, has had a heck of a run the last few days in the market. Look at Gen, uh, Ford here. We kind of rested here just a little bit, consolidating resting. 
Um, I keep an eye on that. If that rests a little bit more, puts in a buy signal, might want to follow that trend right on through to the upside. So there's a few charts for you to look at. Of course, you can always look at some of those techs. The techs are just so extended right now, though it's hard to recommend anything like that because they are so stretched out. But with that, uh, I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day. Wish you all the best, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a good one.